some kind of modern reproduction. And it's kind of irritating me because I prefer the Regency period. I'd like to dress her in a Regency gown, but the way that her shoulders come down so heavily over her arms, um, kind of make that impossible. And I'm semi tempted to take her. What if I replaced her head with this head and use this for another project? The other thing was when I got her, her bum was stuffed so tightly that she couldn't sit down. And so I, I see she's got some wires in there. I split her bum so that I could allow her to sit. I have a tube here that I sewed for the other dress that I'm unpicking. Um, and I thought I could take this tube, which won't be a tube anymore in just a second here, and use that to just repair the opening here um, and it'll just wrinkle up when she's standing and it'll um, smooth out when she's seated. So that's what I'm going to do I think. So let's try to take this off and I have to caution you these are glued on. I can see the glue. It's a really a tremendous amount of glue in there um, and it looks like hot glue like construction strength hot glue. Can you see it? It's it's inside there and I have to get it unconnected and one of the ways that I might do that is by trying to carefully cut away at the glue rather than at the fabric just to get it unattached from there. I can use my bent nose jewelry pliers to try to grab a hold of the glue in there. But it looks like it's already tearing to shreds, so here we go. Might have to do a little bit of repair. I can see how the areas that I got the glue kind of cut are coming away faster and easier than the areas I did not. Be very careful when you do this, and definitely, you know, you don't maybe want to do this with antique dolls because you wouldn't want to break them. Ah, there. See, there's still some glue left inside there, but now I can use her for something else. And now I have this body, and just like my Victorian doll, the arms are sewn in one tube, okay? Or possibly two tubes, but they are placed underneath the shoulders, and that's what happened here. So if I had a pair of scissors that I could cut just the glue, away. But it looks like two, it's two sleeves, if you will, but one bit of wire kind of wrapped in some wadding or fiber fill going uh, 
across. So that's right here, see? So now, what I think I'll do, because there are some tears in the fabric here, is I'll take a little piece of fabric and put it across like that to cover all that up and then I'll put a little piece on her butt and then I think this hmm. there's this one she's a little wonk because there are some wires in there and with all my pulling and twisting I kind of made her a little a little wonkified okay, lay there like a good girl please thank you all right, let's have a look at this. So these are the same. But what about this one? Hmm. I can't decide. This one. This one seems too small somehow. So this is gonna be the one. And I think what I'll do is I'll sand off these two areas here so that they don't stick out quite as far. I apologize if you can hear a chainsaw in the background. What I did here is I sewed a tube out of the fabric from the Regency dress for her arms to make it easier to sew her arms onto the body. I turned the tube inside out and I just sewed it over the existing wire that was there. With a little bit of stuffing in the bust, to give her a little bit more shape. I wasn't sure about sewing the head because I ended up choosing the one that I had poked holes into the shoulders so I could sew the head on directly to those arms because there were some tears in the bodice fabric from when I removed the old head. So I'm just sewing this on however which way because it doesn't matter, it's not gonna show. And then sewing it across the back as well. You see me using pliers every now and then. That's because I have uh, severe arthritis in my hands and I have a hard time sometimes pulling the needle, especially if it, there's a lot of stuffing in what I'm sewing. You want to be careful when you do this that you don't bend your needle and also that you don't compress the eye of the needle so that you can't thread it anymore. All right, here's my little rectangle of fabric that I'm just placing over the arms and I'm going to sew a hem on each side of it, just a quick running stitch all the way so that the edges are finished and that way I don't have to worry about it unraveling. I apologize for the angle of this shot, but I would rather show you how I did it than just tell you, so that's why I'm including it. So there it is, all sewed up, and now I'm just placing it over her shoulders. And now I'm sewing up the sides. I'm not really concerned about it looking like an actual garment. I'm seeing this more as a part of the construction of the doll's body. And again, because this is a modern doll and not an actual antique doll, I don't feel bad about this kind of non-professional repair. Okay, now I'm looking at this head. I've sanded off the edges of the shoulder so that it would fit her body better. And I end up sewing the head on by using a kind of a long and sturdy needle and sewing directly through the body of the doll and up through those holes. Spoiler alert, I end up taking this head off later, so I'm not gonna show you a huge amount about this because 
if you have an actual antique doll bodice that has holes for sewing, it's going to be way easier than this. 72 hours later. I made a dress for this doll, which looks very nice, but here's the problem. The When I repaired this doll, I didn't know what I was doing, and I did a terrible job. So this is her original bisque head. This body has nothing to do with her at all. And then this is Millie Put that I, I learned from Kitten Caboodlers how to use it. I just didn't employ it in the best possible way. And the problem is that, number one, she has no neck. And number two, when I was sewing the tucks up here, these tucks on the bodice of this dress, I accidentally sewed through one of the stitches that I used to sew this doll on. So I'm just gonna take this off by just cutting the stitches and I'm gonna try to take the Millie put off and rebuild it into one that can be like this one is glued on. So I am going to attempt to break off this repair that I did and re-repair it the way that I need it to be repaired. And I think I can just, oh boy, maybe I can't. <laughs> Oh, no, that is some strong, that is strong. Dang, you know, epoxy is no joke. Hmm, I need a pair of pliers. All right, don't try this at home. I'm afraid I'm gonna hurt myself. Oh man, that is really on there. Oh, ha, success. All right, good, let's get that off. Okay, boy, that took some doing, I'm gonna tell you, it was not easy. So now, most of that Millie put is gone, that little tiny bit. Um, the upper side of it is actually the bisque. So now I'm gonna quickly repair her with this two-part epoxy putty. And I don't wanna get it on my so I'm just going to put this little notebook down here. I noticed that mine is discolored and I haven't used it in a while and I wonder if anyone's ever run into that before. So you take equal parts and I don't think I need as much as I thought I did the first time I did it. So remembering that if you're using equal parts, you only want to take out about half as much as you need of this part and then seal that back up and then take the same amount of this part going to assume that like other epoxies that I've worked with such as resin where it sometimes discolors over time that in the mixing it will take care of that discoloration so you mix this for several minutes and I just mix it by flattening and folding flattening and folding you should probably wear gloves while doing this and you certainly don't want to get this on anything. Let's start with her neck and I'm just going to build on to what is there. You can smooth this with a um, paintbrush, a wet paintbrush that you're not going to use for really anything else. do that once I get everything how I want it just to kind of smooth away any fingerprints and smooth away any seams so she's gonna have a neck but it's gonna be 
the neck of a linebacker, an American football player. Poor thing. All right. That one little piece of her actual bisque, uh, the broken part, is jutting out and making it hard. I think that's where I'm going to stop, right there. I had tried, uh, and I've cut this out, but I had tried to do the neck and shoulders simultaneously and that was impossible. So I just focused on making a nice neck that's firmly adhered to her head and I poked a few holes in the underside of it so that tomorrow there'll be something for the new Millie put to adhere to. cut some of this off just by kind of gently laying my blade in there. I don't want to cut my silicone tool here. And I've got this all over my hands, but I just want to check and make sure it's not going to extend too far down or on either side of my doll's body. And before I get the head on there, which is going to make it all tippy, I'm going to clean up these edges. Oops, sorry, I just hit the phone again. I know, I know, I know. I'm so sorry. Clean up those edges earlier. I'm going to come right on the seam of the halfway mark of this um, tool here. As I can see that I can flatten this out a little bit more. I made some little holes in the bottom of her, um, yeah, what I'm going to have to do now, I think, is put this into here to sort of get it into those holes to help me create a better structural bond between the two pieces, filling in any gap, not making the neck longer, but just filling it in. And then placing it on there. And that is about a hundred times easier than what I was trying to do yesterday. So now all I have to do is get this smoothed out, smooth out the join, and then get it off of here. And I may let it dry on here for most of the day and come back and check it. And when it's like kind of like leathery, very, very carefully remove it so that I don't break it. Let me get the dolls out of the way so I don't drip any water on them. So right now I'm smoothing away my fingerprints and I'm gonna roll this kind of up to the neck, up to the neck, up to the neck just the thinnest little layer that I can then smooth uh, okay now with the water That's better than my first attempt. Yeah, we'll be there in a minute, buddy. It'll be mommy cut, kitty cuddly time in a minute. Right now, mommy's got to try to get this little girl um, let's see, and then when I get it on her face, I just wipe it off. So 
so let's just hold this up to the doll without getting any of it on the doll. So that would fit over and hopefully glue down. So I think that is, I'm gonna smooth the back a little bit more. I think that's as good as it's gonna get, kids. It's better than it was last time, I think, for sure. Um, so let's let her dry. I'm just gonna prop her between two pieces of basswood here for now, um, keeping the part uh, with the epoxy on it off of anything because it, it, it'll stick, except for to the, to the silicone, I hope. And I'm gonna go wash my fingers. I just slipped her right off of this and she is what I would call in polymer or uh, precious metal clay lingo leather hard. So I placed her onto the eventual body like so and I can tell that this side is too big and so I'm going to trim that off very very carefully with my little knife. Um, being careful I don't want to um, squeeze this and potentially break it. So I just want to take little little bits um, away until I get to that area right there. And then maybe I can come this way again. All right, how does that look? Not, too, not terrible. So I think that's going to be fine. It's too early to sand it. All right, that works for me. So now I can just let her sit there and dry um, because I don't think having any pressure on it is gonna change her shape. I've got my little girl uh, with her new neck and I just wanna glue her onto her body. And then I've gotta to run to town and buy that carving knife at Michael's and a couple of other things that I need like some felt because I wanna make a needle book to take my needles and my pins on the road. Um, this is Gorilla Glue Heavy Duty Construction Adhesive. You can really um, use other kinds of glue, I guess. I've only ever done this twice. And this is the glue I have, and it's kind of old, and it's really hard to get out. So I'm gonna grab out some of this glue. Um, and just stick it right on the, the doll, um, the curved part underneath here. And what I don't want is a huge amount of it um, coming out, but I also don't want really any part of the, the Millie put here to not stick. She's really on there. She's glued on there really well. So I want this to be glued on there really well also. So I'm gonna just carefully place her on there and I am going to let her dry for 24 hours. And how I'm gonna do that, I'm just gonna kind of press her shoulders, her body and her shoulders down into that uh, chest plate. I just think this doll looks so much better than she did um, in the v other video I showed you with me sort of repairing her. Um, and I can't wait to see how she looks once we get the dress back on her. Once she's dry, I will upload the video of me making the dress. I made the dress before I repaired the doll. So I'll upload that and that will probably be just a video with no talking because I wasn't sure what I was doing and I 
Now that I've done it, I think I can make a pattern later and go into more detail on that dress Stay later. Tuned. And if you could, if you don't mind subscribing, because I just found out that I can't do channel updates talking about when the next video is coming or delays in filming until I have 500 subscribers. So I would really like to have that feature enabled for me. So 500 subscribers is my goal and I hope you'll help me reach it. Thank you so much.